I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on algebra. Here we have some interesting cases to look into. We are going to understand how to work with questions which involve x plus 1 over x equals to k. You could be asked to find the values of x square plus 1 over x square, x cube plus 1 over x cube, x to the power of 4 plus 1 over x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5, or even x to the power of n minus 1 over x to the power of n. For solving such questions quickly, we need to remember some formulas. And these three are very important. Let's try to understand them here. If you are given x plus 1 over x equals to k, in that case, it means that x square plus 1 over x square is k square minus 2 and x cube plus 1 over x cube is k cube minus 3k. Now, if in this case, k is equal to plus or minus 1, in that case, it is a very important result to remember that x cube will be minus or plus 1. That is to say, if x plus 1 over x is equal to plus 1, x cube will be negative 1. If it is minus 1, then x cube will be positive 1. Now here is a formula which converts plus to minus. If we are given x to the power of n plus 1 over x to the power of n equals to k, it could be written as x to the power of n minus 1 over x to the power of n equals to square root of x square minus 4. Now in our section 1, what are we going to do? We are actually going to derive these formulas, right? So we'll first derive. And it is very quick to derive all this. I'm not going to take more than five minutes in this. And once we do that, then we'll have multiple choice test questions, right? So then we'll do multiple choice test questions. Now, these are sometimes very difficult test questions. And if you could do them, then that means you are actually aiming for being on the so without wasting much time, let's look into the derivations first and then we'll take a few examples to practice. So here is the very first derivation for you. We will begin with x plus 1 over x equal to k and then we'll prove that x square plus 1 over x square is k square minus 1. So, so the derivation actually is very simple. You actually have to, we are given this is equal to k. What you need to do is just to square both sides since you need what square is, right? So that will be k square. Apply the quadratic expansion of this, which is x square plus 2ab. That means 2 times x times 1 over x plus 1 over x square. That should be equal to k square, right? So I hope you remember this formula. We are just saying a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square, right? So we have applied this formula here to get the expansion. As you can notice, x divided by x is just 1. We can rearrange and then write this as x square plus 1 over x square plus that is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 equals to k square. And so we get our formula, which is x square plus 1 over x square is equal to k square minus 2. Does it make sense? So it's such a simple derivation, right? So I hope you can remember this. And so when you have a multiple choice question based on this, you can just apply the formula and get the result in a few seconds. Now let's see what happens when we are working with q. So I forgot to type this equals to k here. Let me introduce it here. Now what is a plus b whole cube equals to? So as you remember, a plus b whole cube is a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube. Right? So we are actually going to use this formula and get our result. So we are given x plus 1 over x as equal to k. So if I cube both sides, what do I get? 
if I cube both sides, see, and use this particular expansion, we get x cubed plus 3 times x squared times 1 over x plus 3 times x times 1 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed equals to k cubed, right? Now, the center two terms, we can take three common. So let me rearrange. I'll bring this 1 over x cubed to the left side and rewrite this as x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. The term which we are really interested in finding what it is. In between, what do we get? We get 3. Let me rewrite this as 3x plus this x and x cancel, 3 over x, right, equals to k cubed. Now here we can take 3 common. So what we get here is x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 3 common x plus 1 over x equals to k cubed. Now if I rearrange, I get my formula, right? So let me write down the formula once again right here in this box. Now these are very important formulas, right? x cubed plus 1 over x cubed is indeed equal to k cubed. minus. Now x plus 1 over x is given to us as k. So we get 3k. Correct? That makes sense. Let me rewrite here. So we get x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 3 times that is given to us as k equals to k cubed. Right? So this is what was given to us right there. So we got it from there and we proved the second formula. Perfect. Now, with these two formulas known to us, we can actually solve many questions which could be there in your test paper in this fashion. So, to take an example, I've taken a very simple example just to practice how to use the formula. You can always change this number to any number and work out. So, if you are given x plus 1 over x equals to 4, that means the value of k is equal to 4 in our case, right? So what is the value of x squared plus 1 over x squared? Well, it should be, we can use these formulas, right? So what I've done here is rewritten these formulas here. We'll repeat it a couple of times so that you can always remember and use them when required. So when you're talking about the square terms, it is k squared minus 2. So k is 4, so the answer should be 4 square minus 2. 4 square is 16. 16 minus 2 is 14. So that is the value of k square. Uh, x square plus 1 over x square. If I have to find the value of x cube plus 1 over x cube, and I'm given x plus 1 over x equals to 4, what should that be? Well, just apply the formula, right? So the formula number 2 will be applied here, which is k cube minus 3k. That is to say, 4 cube minus 3 times 4 since k is equal to 4, right? So this is 64 minus 12, all right? So 4 cubed minus 4, 3 times 4, 60. So we can write this as, let me squeeze it in or write it here itself. Okay, so 2 and 52. So that is what we get. Now the question is, how do I extend this to higher powers? Now that is critical. Now for that, think like this. Think like this. Uh, we could substitute x square equals to y. In that case, what happens? If I do this substitution, in that case, what do we get? Well, in that case, y plus 1 over y. Let me write here. So if I write x square equals to y in this particular formula here, then we get y plus 1 over y equals to k square minus 2. So that becomes the constant. So what is going to be y square plus 1 over y square? Well, the formula for that is k square minus 2. That is to say, I have to square this term, which is k square minus 2, and then take away minus 2. You get the idea, right? So that is how we could get our formula for x to the power of 4 plus 1 over x to the power of 4. Since y is x square, right? Since y is x square, I could write this as x to the power of 4 over 1 over x to the power of 4 equals 2. Initially given the k value, square, I mean, uh, the whole square of this, right? So k square minus 2 
which was the original value, whole square of that, right, minus 2. That is what you get. Perfect. So that is how you can find this value. Therefore, I could now write this value as, and this k square minus 2, we already found, right? k square minus 2, we found as 14. Do you see that part? So we could write this as 14 square minus 2. You get the idea, right? So it gives you 190. 6 minus 2, let me write down, 196 minus 2 as equal to 194, correct? Since we have already calculated the value of k square minus 2, k square minus 2 is right here, 14, right? We are squaring that and taking away 2. Does make sense to you, right? So what you have seen here is that we could actually extend our learning. Now in the next page, let us see how to find the formula for x to the power of 5 plus 1 over x to the power of 5. Well, we are going to definitely use the product of these two to get our formula, right? So let's go to the next page and try it out. So you see, within no time, we actually prove this identity, which is x plus 1 over x equals to k, implies that x squared plus 1 over x squared equals to k squared minus 2. And for x plus 1 over x equals to 4, we found that this value was equal to 14. And also we found that x cubed plus 1 over x cubed is equals to k cubed minus 3k. And for x plus 1 over x equals to 4, we found this value to be 52. Now the question here is how to figure out the value for x to the power of 5 plus 1 over x to the power of 5. Now, well, we can begin with uh, what we have already got, which is 1 over x plus 1 over x cubed, we know that we can multiply this with x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now, when you do this, what do you get? Multiplying x cubed with x squared gives you x to the power of 5, and this with the other thing gives you plus uh, x, right? And now when you do 1 over x cubed times x squared, you get what? You get 1 over x. And when you multiply these two, you get 1 over x to the power of 5. Perfect. Now here, what we need is x to the power of 5 plus 1 over x to the power of 5. And what we have here, one more addition term, is x plus 1 over x. On the left side, these two terms are known to us. We found that x cubed plus 1 over x cubed is 52, right? And this value was 14 using the above formula. We also know what x plus 1 over x is. It is equal to 4, right? So now we can easily find what is x to the power of 5 plus 1 over x to the power of 5, correct? So we can just multiply 52 and 14 and take away x plus 1 over x, which is 4, right? So what we get here is a value which is 52 times 14 take away this value which is given to us as 4 do you get the idea right so sorry 52 here okay so this is what you get so you need to multiply 52 and 14 and then take away uh, 4 so let's do it so we have 14 times 52 which is 8 and 2 5 times 4 22 and 70 so we get 728 so this value is basically 728 minus 4 is equal to x to the power of 5 plus 1 over x to the power of 5. So the value is 724 for us. So that is how we get this value as 724. I hope that makes sense. Correct. So even if we complicate this question to the level of 5 degree, we can still find the answer very easily. You can go like this ahead also. 6 means you can go one more level, right? Cube square. So that is how we could actually solve all questions related with x plus 1 over x to the equals to some constant. I hope that makes sense, right? So let's move forward and take a few more practice questions. Now what have I done here is taken a very special case. We learned that x plus 1 over x is equal to k, I missed this k everywhere, then we prove that x cube plus 1 over x cube is k cube minus 3k. Now if we take some special case, which is 
if x plus 1 over x is equal to plus 1, that is to say, if k is equal to 1, then what happens? Well, in that case, we can find what is x cube plus 1 over x cube is. It should be equal to k cube, which is 1 here, right? So, 1 cube minus 3 times k minus 3 times 1. So, that gives you x cube plus 1 over x cube is equal to 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. Now, the question is, how can I add two numbers and get minus 2? Well, clearly, we have to have x cube as equal to minus 1. So, that is the case which we are talking about. So, if k is 1, then x cube is minus 1. Does it make sense? So, this is another very, very important conclusion which we will use in coming examples. Now, let's see what happens when we write x plus 1 over x equals to minus 1. So, that is to say, if k is equal to minus 1, then x cube is what? Perfect. Let's work it out. In that case, we know applying this particular formula, we get x cube plus 1 over x cube equals to k is minus 1. So, minus 1 cube minus 3 times minus 1. So, on the right side, minus 1 cube will be negative 1 and that gives us plus 3. And this results into positive 2. So, we have here x cube plus 1 over x cube, right? So, we have x cube plus 1 over x cube. So, the sum is positive 2. That means what? Well, that means x cube is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Perfect. So, that gives us the second result. Easy way to remember here is that if we have x plus 1 over x equals to plus or minus 1. If it is plus 1, then x cube is negative 1. But if it is negative 1, then it is positive 1. Does it make sense to you, right? So, take a breath, try to get this formula. And based on this formula, now let us have some practice questions. So, there we go. We have two questions for you to practice. Question number one here is, if x plus 1 over x equals to minus 1, then find what is x to the power of 9 plus 1 over x to the power of 9. The second question here is, if x plus 1 over x is positive 1, then find the value of the expression x to the power of 15 plus x to the power of 24 plus x 33, x to the power of 51 plus x to the power of 60 is what? Well, in this particular case, if x plus 1 over x is minus 1, then this implies that x cube is what? It has to be positive 1, correct? Now, x cube is positive 1. Now, we are looking into x to the power of 9 plus 1 over x to the power of 9. I could write this as x cube to the power of 3, right? Plus 1 over x cube cube. And that gives you, we know x cube is 1. So, that gives you 1 cube plus 1 over 1 cube. And definitely, this is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So, we get this answer as 2. Perfect. So, that is how we are going to solve it. Now, let's see the next example, right? In the next example, we are given x plus 1 over x as positive 1. So, that implies that x cube is negative 1. So, here we have this expression. How do I get x cube? Well, powers are multiples of 3 as you have seen, right? So, we'll just write this as x cube and something. 15 means 3 times 5 plus again x cubed to the power of 8 that gives us 24 and then x cubed to the power of 11 to get 33 x cubed to the power of this time it is 1 and 7 17 plus x cubed to the power of 20. Now all these x cubes can be replaced by minus 1 correct. So we get this as equal to minus 1 to the power of odd number minus 1 to the power of even number minus 1 odd number, minus 1 odd number, right? 17 is odd and this one is even. So, odd numbers will give you minus 1, even will give me plus 1. This is again minus 1, this is minus 1, that is plus 1. And now, you can count how many negatives. This, this negative cancels with the other one, this cancels with this one, we are left with negative 1 
as our answer. Does make sense to you? So that is how you are going to easily get answer for these scary expressions. Perfect. Now let's move on to the very end. The last question here, which is a test question for you. We are given x plus 1 over x equals to positive 1. We need to find what is x to the power of 10 plus 1 over x to the power of 10. You can actually pause the video now, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. Well, here it's a bit tricky, right? We know since x plus 1 over x is equal to 1, x cubed should be minus 1. How do I get x cubed? 10 is not a multiple of x cubed. But what we can do here is we have x to the power of 10 over 1 plus plus 1 over in the denominator 10. We could write this as x times x to the power of 9 plus 1 over x times x to the power of 9, right? So x to the power of 9. Does it make sense to you? Now, what can you do? Well, now it becomes sensible. We could write this as x times this 9 is 3 to the power of 3, right? So it is 3 to the power of 3 plus 1 over x times x cubed cubed, right? Now, x cubed is minus 1. So we have minus 1 cubed plus 1 over x times minus 1 cubed. Now, minus 1 cubed is negative. So this could be written as negative of x plus 1 over negative of x. Well, this is equal to what? This is simply equal to negative of x plus 1 over x. And we know what x plus 1 over x is. It is equal to 1. Therefore, we get negative 1 as our answer. Does make sense to you, right? So we get negative 1 as our answer. So that is how you're going to get the value of this question also. Is that clear? Well, you must have noticed that we didn't take the examples based on the last case, which is writing the expression in terms of negative, right? So we'll take that in part two. But I hope with this, you understand how to prove these relations and find solutions to similar questions in few seconds, right? In few seconds, less than a minute for sure. And also, you understand and appreciate that the derivation for these formulas is not difficult at all. So at the last minute, if you even forget, you can do it on the side. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Also, share my videos with your friends. In case you have any queries, feel free to send me email on the given address. Thanks a lot and all the best.